humanity isn't rational and somehow I don't think that I'm going to persuade many people to be rational. If there's such a thing as God's word, it's rationality and I have the call to spread it. There's only one science. It's the only thing that encompasses all of man. Isaac Asimov wrote 40 novels and over 280 non-fiction books in his five-decade career. We could call Asimov a polymath, even a genius, or we could just say he was a science fiction writer. But Asimov today is also remembered as a champion of scientific values of rationality and reason in a world where we gave up on space exploration and when forces of the irrational like fundamentalist religion and UFO conspiracy theories are resurgent, Isaac Asimov is a beacon for all those who believe in science and reason as the path to a better future. The Foundation Saga was Isaac Asimov's great vision of a future built on science and high technology. It charts the collapse of a galactic empire and the rise of a new civilization. This is the story of how young Isaac Asimov dreamed of a far future where superstition and the irrational have lost their power, where the old empires of corrupt power and totalitarian control have collapsed, and of the rise of a new kind of power in the galaxy and here in reality. This is the story of Foundation, Isaac Asimov's Empire of Reason. New York, 1942. America is fighting the largest war in human history, and the young Isaac Asimov is rushing to his regular meeting with John W. Campbell, the legendary editor of Astounding magazine. Campbell is a demanding editor, and Asimov has nothing to pitch. In fact, Asimov is preparing to give up science fiction for good. Science fiction magazines are gaining in popularity. Science fiction movies and radio plays are still rare, and television barely exists yet. But in magazine stories, hardcore science fiction fans can get their fill. Following the success of his story Nightfall the year before, Isaac Asimov is now a fan favorite. But Asimov, aged 22, believes it's time to focus on married life and his adult career as a biochemist. His lifetime income from science fiction is less than a year's salary from his wartime job at the Philadelphia Naval Yards, where he works alongside fellow science fiction authors Robert Heinlein and L. Sprague de Camp. John W. Campbell has been championing a new kind of fiction that does away with pulp adventures and space opera in favor of ideas based on scientific fact. Robert Heinlein, with his engineering-inspired stories, is the star of Astounding. But Asimov is catching up. Both men are scientists, the kind of writers Campbell has been nurturing for his new science, science fiction. Science fiction was heavily adventure flavored, stereotypical characters, uh, mainly the mad scientists. But the only saving grace they had was that they all had beautiful daughters. And the hero, a sturdy, large feud, blonde American, who knew no science, but was great in the fight, always fell in love with the scientist's daughter, who was pretty much helpless except for scream. At any rate, Campbell changed all that. And what he wanted were people who would write stories in which the science was realistic. Asimov's voracious reading has led him to Edward Gibbon's Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire. Gibbon's classic six-volume history of Rome is more than a history. It's a treatise on the development of civilizations that helps to define the political system we now call liberalism. The political system Asimov will write about in Foundation. Isaac Asimov's polymath imagination spins a story from Edward Gibbon's history. What if the declining empire was not in the past, but in the future? A galactic empire, an empire that can illustrate why old imperial civilizations collapse, and a new rising empire to show how science and reason can build a better civilization. John W. Campbell sees the potential 
Editor and writer debates the ideas that will become the Foundation Saga. A prophetic scientist, Harry Selden, using pure reason to save civilization. The imagined science of psychohistory extrapolated from statistical sciences of economics and sociology. A collapsing galactic empire and a distant colony of that empire, much like the early American colonies, that rises to become a new empire founded on enlightenment principles of reason and rationality, the foundation. As the young Asimov is writing his saga of galactic power struggles, his homeland of the United States is rising to power in the world. America wins World War II by producing more tanks and planes than all of its opponents combined, and ends the war with nuclear weapons that unleash never-before-seen destruction. American power is the power of science and reason. But America also inherited the largest empire in history from Great Britain and built a vast military-industrial complex that will continue to fight wars from Korea and Vietnam to Iraq and Afghanistan. As much as Foundation is a fantasy of the future, it is also a metaphor for the very real present of American power. Asimov will write nine Foundation short stories and novellas between 1942 to 1951. These will be collected as three novels, Foundation 1951, Foundation and Empire 1952, and Second Foundation 1953. They chart the story of the Foundation through centuries of development and the challenges faced to found a truly scientific civilization. Foundation and History The Empire has spread through the galaxy over many millennia. It has perfected atomic engines to travel between the stars. The Empire's capital, Trantor, is a planet encrusted with technology, with buildings and structures that go miles deep. But for all its technology, the Galactic Empire has become a fossilized civilization. It's still governed by a corrupt bureaucracy, ruled over by an emperor. Asimov was the first writer to fully imagine a future galaxy ruled by an imperial political structure. His Galactic Empire would inspire the empires of Frank Herbert's Dune and George Lucas's Star Wars, the culture of Ian M. Banks, even the Warhammer 40,000 Imperium of Man. And without Foundation, there would be no Federation in Star Trek. Before Asimov, the galaxy was just a fantasy setting for Flash Gordon-style pulp adventures. After Asimov, the galaxy was a cinema widescreen on which science fiction writers projected the political and social struggles of human civilization. Adamov's fiction is unsettling to many readers. He's uninterested in characters. Humans in Foundation are only bit players in the grand sweep of history. Adamov actively avoids triggering emotions. He wants the reader to reason, not feel. Foundation is seminal, hard science fiction. A literature not of emotions and feelings, but of ideas and concepts. And there's no grander idea from the era of Golden Age science fiction than psychohistory. The three theorems of psychohistory, the time periods dealt with, are in the region of three generations. The population must be in the billions, plus minus 75 billion. The population under scrutiny is oblivious to the existence of the science of psychohistory. The scientist Harry Selden has developed a new discipline of mathematics that can accurately predict human behavior en masse. Psychohistory has already made accurate forecasts, so when psychohistory produces a prophecy of future doom, it cannot be ignored. The galactic empire will collapse. 10,000 years of chaos will follow. But this can be reduced to 1,000 years if the Selden plan is implemented. A galactic encyclopedia is proposed to prevent the collapse. But this is only a cover story for the true Selden plan. 
the establishment of a foundation on the galactic edge to rebuild civilization on principles of science and reason, and a second foundation to be established secretly to guide the path of psychohistory. Asimov's psychohistory is inspired by the statistical science of economics. As the foundation stories were written, economics was given new importance. America and its allies after World War II imposed a new order on the world in the Bretton Woods Agreement. A new institution, the World Bank, was founded to guide global development. Economics would be the science that guided history. The young Asimov seems to believe wholeheartedly in his creation. But as Asimov grows as a writer and thinker, the later Foundation stories cast more and more doubt on the science of history. While psychohistory helps Foundation to survive its early crises, it later becomes a weakness. The Foundation's belief in its inevitable destiny makes it complacent. But you haven't tried. You haven't tried once. First, you refused to admit that there was a manis at all. Then you reposed an absolutely blind faith in the Emperor. Now you've shifted to Harry Seldon. Throughout, you have invariably relied on authority or on the past, never on yourselves. Salvo Hardin, Foundation. Adamov's imagined future civilization is also about our civilization. Inspired by Edward Gibbon's History of Ancient Rome, a book that helped create ideas of modern liberalism, Asimov is writing about liberal democracy. But as he extrapolates liberal values into the future, he predicts a problem, the complacent belief that liberal civilization is inevitable. The economist Francis Fukuyama will give this complacent belief a name when he declares the end of history in the late 1990s. Its military power, political stability, and crucially, sciences like economics, uh, did I mention that Fukuyama is an economist, mean that liberal civilization will inevitably triumph over all others. The historian Timothy Snyder would later critique the belief in the end of history that took hold of the United States as the politics of inevitability. Foundation, as the most famous science fiction story of post-war America, read by the teenagers who would become the scientific and technological elite of the nation, was part of creating the politics of inevitability. The early Foundation stories are a hymn to American liberal and scientific power. Every vice of the empire has been repeated in the Foundation. Inertia. Our ruling class knows one law. No change. Despotism. They know one rule, force, maldistribution. They know one desire, to hold what is theirs. Foundation and Empire. But as Foundation continues, it becomes something more like a satire of American neoliberalism. The Foundation's leaders become a corrupt mercantile oligarchy. Its citizens are kept confused with myths and disinformation. The psycho-historians of the far future much like the economists of today, become something like a priesthood. The science that can create Asimov's empire of reason will, Asimov reasons, become an irrational faith that destroys that empire. Foundation and America. Science fiction is metaphor, but metaphor for what? Ursula K. Le Guin. There you have something like Thomas More's Utopia, mm -hmm. which gave the whole thing its name. There you're trying to sell something. Something would be wonderful if only you had socialists. Much more common and much more effective are the ones that show what not to do, like in Gulliver's Travels, when you have the world of little people who mirror the, all the follies and corruption of 18th century England. And you don't stop to think that what uh, that what the author is doing is to deliberately mimic English society and get you to laugh at him because you think it's science fiction. The Foundation is faced with a series of Selden crises, pivotal moments in its development as a civilization, which it can overcome by following 
the prophetic guidance of his founding father, Harry Seldon, master of psychohistory. Perhaps inspired by his admiration for Jonathan Swift's satire of Great Britain, Asimov shapes the history of the foundation around early American history. The first foundationers are intrepid settlers, colonizing a dangerous new world to escape a decaying empire, a bloated technocracy still ruled by a monarch. Fifty years later, the foundation faces its first Selden crisis. Surrounded by more powerful states, the foundation must strike a balance of power to play their opponents against each other. The same geopolitical situation faced by the early American colonies. The leader who emerges from the first crisis, Salvor Hardin, is a George Washington figure, a military and political leader who becomes the first mayor of the foundation after deposing the imperial governors, giving the foundation independence from empire. Salvor Hardin also leads the foundation through the second Selden crisis. To cement the foundation's power, Mayor Hardin creates a religion of science that gains believers across the galaxy. What the foundation lacks in military power, it makes up for with spiritual authority. I think it's always there. I think that people have never stopped believing in anything that has no germ of sense to it. Religion for Asimov is an irrational force that can be put to rational purposes. All empires use religion as a control mechanism over the masses. Early America was no exception, using the Protestant faith to unify colonists across the continent. The third Selden crisis comes when a rival power armed with atomics confronts the foundation. A new leader emerges in Hoba Malo, a rogue trader who uses economic power to defeat the rival empire. In much the same way the United States used its growing economic power to defeat many of its early opponents, and in an echo of the Cold War to come. Finally, the foundation must defeat the empire that birthed it. A powerful imperial fleet is sent to destroy the former colony. But the great general Bel Rios is a threat to the weak emperor and is eliminated before he can defeat the foundation. Asimov's metaphor is clear. Old imperial power structures will inevitably fall under their own corruption. The foundation, Asimov's empire of reason, is destined to replace them. It's not obvious to many readers that the foundation is a metaphor for America, or that science fiction is a metaphor for anything. Many or most sci-fi fans read our beloved stories literally. Sometimes a galactic empire is just a galactic empire. And that's exactly how Asimov and the Grand Masters of Science Fiction want it. Metaphor is most powerful when it sneaks in below the guard, of the conscious mind. But when science fiction is great, and when great science fiction like Foundation is still being read 80 years after it was written, it's most often because it is a metaphor for something that's very important to us. And few things are more important today, or when Foundation was written, than American power in the world. For Asimov, the power of the United States is the power that can bring his empire of reason from imagination and into reality. If Asimov over-idealizes America, if he ignores its origins in an act of genocide and its history of slavery, it's because Asimov, as a Russian immigrant and a Jewish man, has seen the alternatives. Foundation and Socialism Foundation would be a simple story if Asimov just believed in the inevitable triumph of science and reason. The Foundation would use its technology and overwhelming power to build a new galactic civilization, and that would be that. That's the narrative of unquestioned belief in liberal democracy that Gene Roddenberry gave the world in Star Trek. Look at these three words written larger than the rest. Tall words proudly saying, we the people. Asimov instead throws a spanner into the mechanism 
of history. The Mule is a powerful psychic who has the power to take over entire fleets of starships by persuading their commanders to follow his cause. The technological and scientific might of the Foundation falls without a fight to the mysterious Mule. The Foundation is turned overnight from a liberal democracy to a totalitarian dictatorship. Asimov was born in 1920 in Russia soon after the Communist Revolution. Asimov's family were Jewish Russians who fled to America when young Isaac was three. Asimov wrote Foundation as the world learned about the Holocaust of the Jewish peoples by German National Socialism. Asimov had first-hand insight into the irrational forces unleashed against civilization in the 20th century. As the 20th century began, it was widely believed that science and reason had succeeded in building a new technological civilization. But socialist revolutions in Europe, then Asia, argued otherwise. These revolutions were driven by charismatic leaders who argued against liberal democracy, who claimed it was a lie covering over class injustice, colonialism, and the same old imperial power structures. The mule is a satirical metaphor for the totalitarian dictators of the 20th century. A mule is a hybrid animal that cannot breed, a nod to Lenin and Hitler, both childless dictators, as immortalized in the British wartime song. Hitler. The mule, when we meet him, is an absurd and ridiculous figure, a weakling with incredible powers of persuasion. As Asimov imagines his empire of reason, he sees that among the greatest threats it faces is the charismatic demagogue. Using the persuasive powers of ideologies like socialism and fascism to unleash the irrational forces of the human psyche threats to democracy, foreign or domestic. The mule is too powerful to defeat directly. Instead, he is allowed to live out his natural life in power. Following his death, his regime swiftly collapses and democracy is re-established in the foundation. But these events are guided by a mysterious new enemy facing the first foundation. The second foundation. The Selden Plan called for the establishment of a second foundation to secretly guide the progress of psychohistory. To defeat the mule, the second foundation is forced to reveal its existence. The first foundation now knows its path is being manipulated by an opponent that can infiltrate its government at all levels and use psychic powers to persuade the foundation's own people to betray it. As America entered a Cold War with the Soviet Union, Asimov adds a metaphor for the anti-communist Red Scare that will engulf the US in the 1950s. The United States and liberal democracies were confronted with a powerful ideological opponent. The revolutions of the early 20th century had grown into an empire of socialism. Socialism's power proves to be its appeal to large parts of the elite of liberal democratic nations like the United States. It seemed to subvert liberalism from within. The foundation, absolute in their belief that science and reason are the path to a higher civilization, begin a purge of second foundation agents that includes the execution of any foundation citizen who might be suspected. But Asimov, like many intellectuals, can't dismiss socialism. As the galactic-scale brain of Isaac Asimov casts its imagination into the future, he sees an advanced civilization that is more collective and communal as almost inevitable. And with it would come a new kind of science. Foundation and science. The first foundation is given the entire knowledge of physics and other hard sciences, but only the second foundation has access to the higher sciences of psychology.
In all the known history of mankind, advances have been made primarily in physical technology. Control of self and society has been left to chance or to emotion. As a result, no culture of greater stability than about 55% has ever existed, and these only as the result of great human misery. Isaac Asimov, Second Foundation the psycho-historians who initiated the Selden clan do not join the first foundation, but instead form the second foundation at a secret location. They continue to develop psycho-history as a collaborative map of history stored in the prime radiant. Using this knowledge, the second foundation guides the course of the first. Second Foundation agents have such advanced knowledge of psychology that it approximates psychic powers. With minute gestures and expressions, they can take over the nervous systems of others to wield influence over or even paralyze an opponent. Through the development of the mathematics necessary to understand the facts of neural physiology and the electrochemistry of the nervous system, which themselves had to be traced down to nuclear forces, it first became possible to truly develop psychology. Isaac Asimov, The Second Foundation. The idea that psychology constitutes a higher order of knowledge than the physical sciences is important in science fiction. It's present in Frank Herbert's Dune, in Stanley Kubrick's 2001, and even in the mysticism of Star Wars, whose Jedi Knights are directly inspired by Asimov's second foundation. Let me see your identification. You don't need to see his identification. It's also uh, an idea open to abuse. Another acolyte of John W. Campbell, L. Ron Hubbard, would make use of ideas born in science fiction as part of his real-world neo-religions of Dianetics and then Scientology. Asimov would distance himself from Campbell and Astounding magazine as it was swept into the cult of Elrond. But Asimov takes seriously the idea of a new kind of science. As he imagines his empire of reason, he sees that the Foundation will face a transition, that as its powers of science and reason peak, it will have to decide whether physical science alone is the path forward, or whether the human psyche is the final frontier of knowledge. Foundation's Edge, the first sequel to Isaac Asimov's Foundation trilogy, opens with the ambitious young Senator Golan Trevise questioning the Selden Plan, the belief in which gives Foundation its exceptional purpose in the galaxy. Trevise will be manipulated into seeking out a secretive conspiracy that presents an ultimate threat to the Foundation, a threat that turns out to be greater even than the second foundation. The full foundation saga has a spiral structure in which the later books substantially alter the context of the original trilogy. Asimov effectively retired from science fiction to write science non-fiction for over a decade, but his fame grew so great he was tempted back to write two prequels and two sequels to Foundation. Foundation's Edge is the best of all of the Foundation books, both for the quality of its storytelling and its ideas. It's the book where, after decades of processing the problem of human civilizational evolution, Isaac Asimov's galactic-scale intellect finally delivers its answer. Through hyperspace, that unimaginable region that was neither space nor time, matter nor energy, something nor nothing, one could traverse the length of the galaxy in the interval between two neighboring instants of time. Isaac Asimov, Foundation. Asimov first introduces hyperspace in the Psycho-Historians, and in Foundation's Edge, Asimov gives a detailed explanation of how advanced computation allows travel through hyperspace. It's one of many ideas from Asimov that George Lucas borrowed for Star Wars. Traveling through hyperspace ain't like dust and crops, boy. Without precise calculations, we'd fly right through a star or bounce too close to a supernova and then it injured real quick, wouldn't it? 
The hyperspace theory emerges from Einstein's geometric model of space-time and the possibility of higher, hyper-dimensions that might connect distant points in lower-dimensional space-time. The main determinant of speed of travel would not be the power of an engine, but the computational power available to calculate the math. Golan Treviz uses the hyperdrive to travel to Gaia, a superorganism, where a community of highly evolved humanoids live as a group mind and collective consciousness, who seek to turn the entire galaxy into a living entity called Galaxia. This is the ultimate future that the Foundation, the Mule, and the Second Foundation are only stages in the development of. Asimov's thought experiment on the development of human civilization arrives at something like a conclusion. Asimov sees an end point to history, a telos that humankind is drawn inexorably toward by the power of reason itself. Asimov's empire of reason will transform into a future that reason alone can only dream of. It seems to me that when it's time to die, and that will come to all of us, there'll be a certain pleasure in thinking that you had utilized your life well, that you had learned as much as you could, gathered in as much as possible of the universe, and enjoyed it. I mean, there's only this one universe and only this one lifetime to try to grasp it. And while it is inconceivable that anyone can grasp more than a tiny portion of it, at least do that much. I mean, what a tragedy just to pass through and get nothing out of it. The last published book of the Foundation saga is also Isaac Asimov's last novel, finished only weeks before his death in 1992. Forward the Foundation is Asimov's most human novel. The great science fiction writer comes down from the realm of high concepts to write the human story of Harry Seldon and, in so doing, Something like an Asimov autobiography, it probably hasn't escaped attentive readers that the great psycho-historian Harry Seldon is the alter ego of the great science fiction writer Isaac Asimov, and the Foundation saga is Asimov's Seldon plan. Asimov's galactic-scale sci-fi brain has looked deep into the far human future and left for us a prophecy of what may be to come for our empire of reason. Foundation is a metaphor for the age of science and reason we live in, for America and the West and for liberal democracy. Asimov sees challenges to our empire of reason on three axes, past, present and future. From our past is the constant threat of resurgent imperialism. The old corrupt empires of our past are always waiting to rush back in and assert their dominance once again. In our present is the powerful force of complacency, the belief in the end of history and the politics of inevitability. Whenever liberal democracies like America believe in our own exceptional destiny. We become the old empires we claim to have escaped. But the greatest challenge to Asimov's empire of reason comes from its future. Asimov has charted the development of the foundation from a lone colony to a high technology civilization based on science, technology and reason. But reason itself determines that history is far from at an end there must be more still to come. The science of today will inevitably be eclipsed by new paradigms of science that reveal new models of reality that seem irrational to us today. As Asimov nods towards in his thinking on hyperspace, but science is a self-correcting system that will adapt when new evidence is presented. Our political and social systems are far from self-correcting. Like the first foundation facing the second, we today have built liberal democratic societies around values of independence, freedom and individuality. 
that are deeply threatened by a future that may well be more collective, more social, and more communal. Even Asimov can find no solution to the conflict between liberalism and socialism. The final novel in the Foundation chronology, Foundation and Earth, is a joyously Swiftian adventure to a series of planets that satirize the ways humans fail to create a better civilization, finally arriving at a radioactive Earth destroyed by nuclear war between its squabbling ideological factions. The greatest threat to Isaac Asimov's empire of reason, Asimov reasons, is the human refusal to be reasonable.